everyone, welcome back to the Nintendo Prime Podcast. I think this is episode five of the new season. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm yeah, pretty sure it's it episode five. We have a lot of in-between conversation pieces, but uh, welcome back to the podcast, guys. I am your host, as always, Nathaniel Ruffeljance, Mr. Nintendo Prime. Uh, across the table from me is Eric Moore. Hello. My best friend and co-host. And then up on the giant TV, if you are watching on the video version, is Miss Holly Wolf. Hello. Hello. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, for those who might not know who Holly Wolf is, because I have no idea what audience crossovers are like and all of that, uh, she is a gamer. She is a live streamer. She is a cosplayer. She is a former Playboy Playmate. All these things. Uh, it, It... it gets a little dicey sometimes. I don't want, you know, I don't want all you young kids out there fapping away. She is a take- oh, no. she is, oh, she is a spoken God. for woman. Oh. oh lord. She is spoken for. Be respectful. <laughs> oh my. I'm sure you've dealt with plenty of that stuff over the years. Um anyways, oh, oh so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I can only imagine. Unfortunately, my dad oh. bod over here isn't doing it for the ladies right now, so Oh, it's okay. No. I'm, all, I'm also spoken for, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> all right. Um, so we got a, a couple cool conversations, and I actually want to start off by talking about cosplay because we've never really had anyone on the podcast that specifically does cosplay. So it's kind of like a, a, an interesting scene because the only time I've personally seen any cosplayers in person are at, at events like E3. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, I don't even have a lot of experience with it. I just kind of enjoy from afar. Um, one of your favorite cosplays for me it was the uh, Breath of the Wild Zelda one that you did. Um, yes, <laughs> it's my favorite game of all time, and I just think, like, your face is like the perfect face for for Princess Zelda. So, oh, just- oh wow, thank you. I actually <laughs> I remember cosplaying Zelda. Um, I was really scared to do it the first time because like it, it means a lot to me. Mm-hmm. So I was really 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 picky and oh my god i remember (laughs) i remember people on my video who worked really hard for um we even had um a friend of mine like do all the vocals herself for the song and everything like zelda's lullaby Mm -hmm. but i remember a few people in the comments being like this woman looks too old to be zelda she can't be in her 20s or in her teens or whatever and i was just like Ouch. Okay, and so thank you. I know, right? But still, People are so mean. <laughs> but I I guess what? What? Thank guys, you. It's, one, it's cosplay. Yeah, you can't expect someone to transform to a younger version of themselves. All um, right, if only. And like, I don't know. Maybe it's just because I'm a guy in my mid 30s, but it didn't bother me at all. Like, I don't look. Thank you. I don't look yeah. at Princess Zelda like as oh my god, it needs to be this teenage chick. I'm like, nah, it's it's cool. I feel I like it'd be weirder. Your face is perfect. I loved your cosplay of it. And I've seen a lot of um, Zelda cosplays over the years because I used to run websites like Zelda Informer back in the day. And, right, uh, right. I used to run in the same crowd as Game Over Jesse. That's how I, you know, mm-hmm. I ended up getting to know who you were um, back when you used to do the Hylian Games cast a lot more often. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, it's, it, it's just an interesting scene to me. So, I, explain to me, like, I, I've always been curious about this part. What... Okay. Um, like, what do you enjoy most, I guess, about being a cosplayer? Because I, I, I like dressing up on Halloween, but okay. this is like okay. Halloween, but on pretty much any time you want. Okay. Ooh, well, hmm. I love, well, I don't know. It's so weird because I really love taking a good photo. So for me, it's, it's the, it's the end product. It's getting all of these things together and doing all this work and then finally getting to actually wear the costume and take beautiful photos. And I love my Zelda cosplay so much too. Like, as I'm sure you guys know, I do a lot of sexier cosplays, like a lot of very physique, sexy girls, which I love. Um, But for me, for me as a person, I really, really love the very like elegant, beautiful scenic type shots so like when i first did zelda that's what we did we did very sad scenic shots because obviously like breath of the wild is is a destroyed hyrule so i i found a place that that looked like that and i was just so excited and and seeing the photos after and and kind of just getting the feelings of what happens like in a certain game in a photo is my favorite part i would say like so yeah like the end production i love 
I love so much. Yeah. That's awesome. So you do make most <laughs> like all your own costumes, right? I think I've seen um, some I would streams say, with you making some sometimes. Yeah, I would I would make about I would say it's it's kind of fifty fifty for me. So um I love cosplaying latex as a material. I don't make any of my latex cosplays. Um it's something that I have no idea how to work with. Um <laughs> I make a ma- to work with. It's just its own fabric <laughs> and you need to <laughs> you need to know what you're doing, right? Um mm-hmm. for me, I tend to make a lot of my own props. A lot of my own armor um but so for example like with my zelda cosplay i had someone make me that because i wanted it to be perfect <laughs> and i'm not the greatest seamstress like i'm really not but i made like my sheikah slate that lit up um and uh, i did the boots and everything for her so it depends really i did some of the middle section too um but i later had it redone by someone who's a um who does corsets because mm. I wanted it to look better. I was, I wasn't happy with it. <laughs> so I actually had it redone. So it all depends really. Um, and because I do cosplay professionally now, I tend to split it even more because uh, the internet is very fast, right? You cosplay something and people mm-hmm. are like, that's great, but what's next, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It's just like any sort of content. People watch a YouTube video or they watch a podcast. They're like, well, that's cool. But like, what are you doing now? Right. Yep. That's what literally and happens at the end of every episode. Like, that was a great one. When's oh, the next one? It's like, well, it's, next yeah. It, uh, oh, <laughs> let me, let me film it. Oh my goodness. Right. So for me, cosplay, some cosplays are like 50 to a hundred hours of work. Mm-hmm. So I have to now, I have to, I have to pay people uh, and commission people to do wigs for me or certain um cosplays and then i work on other parts or they do a full cosplay for me and i make another one so it just gets done faster otherwise like i would put out one every two months and that's it and people mm-hmm. would probably never want to see my content again because it wouldn't oh, be wouldn't say that. as much of it <laughs> but, <that is laughs> but like, you know you know what i mean works, people so, yeah. are yeah. yeah oh yeah. my god yeah if you're not pumping out something new constantly yeah, i have to have a new video every day yeah. or you just people stop watching yeah oh, Exa- exactly you're forgotten <laughs> so um, <you'll> <laughs> to a certain extent people don't understand the the time and effort that goes in behind the scenes all they see is not the, at all the, th- the 30 minute video the 15 minute video and yeah. they think oh you just recorded for 15 minutes and you're done you know yeah. or oh my gosh you, there was someone so, so th- this podcast, there was someone who emailed me and said, I really like your podcast, but uh looks pretty easy. And I, and, I, and I just sat there, I'm like, do you even, like, just building the set. Before. Yeah, mean, right. Let alone <laughs> yeah. building the set. Yeah, now that the set is built, yeah. it's a little easy, but, like, that's just the recording part. Then in editing, like, there's sometimes we talk about certain games, and I put game trailers in, so then there's special editing I do for that, where I split us up into three different videos off of one video feed. That takes some time to do. You have background layouts. You have audio leveling. Mm-hmm. I mean, that is a pain in the butt in that of itself in video editing. Um, and, yeah. and, and just all these little minute things, color correction. Um, sometimes, like right now, technically our video feed is like slightly crooked. So then I got to fix yeah, that in right. post. <laughs> and so like you guys don't see any of this stuff. Right. You just see the end product. Yep. And, exactly. Um, same, same with cosplay. I, I remember I went and I scouted locations before i i shot my my zeldas um sometimes you have to travel to to locations sometimes i i shot Aerith from final fantasy 7 mm-hmm. and i shot it and i and i wasn't happy um and, and i flew to la and i reshot it nice because i wasn't happy um and it's so i spent important. hundreds of dollars yeah. to reshoot it and and find a photographer last minute and redo my wig because I wasn't happy with the hairline. Aerith has a really interesting hairline and I just wasn't happy. So I, I spent an extra like three days just I was on an airplane like, hey, are you free tomorrow? I really need this done. Yeah. So like people, they don't see that. Yeah, and I, I think so that's lost. Um, everything's a lot. <laughs> like, yeah. so uh, as someone who is like probably most people who uh, watch your cosplays or, or follow you on social media and, and check out all that stuff. Um, you know, I, I think sometimes that there's not always an appreciation for the art form that goes behind it. Mm-hmm. Um, because as you're describing right now, like, yeah, okay, anyone can dress up and get, get photos taken. 
right? You know, whether yes. they're sexy photos in lingerie or whether you're um, cosplaying certain characters, trying to present certain scenes. But you're someone that really cares about the art of it all. Like, you're not mm-hmm. just good with, like, oh, just take a picture of me anywhere. No, I, I need good lighting. I need good scenery. I scout. I care about what the final product looks like because I think, yeah. I, I think there are, by the way, I mean, I'm sure you're aware, there's plenty of women out there that do some similar things that I don't feel like they care as much about the artistry of it. Um, and you can kind of see the difference, in my opinion at least, between the the people who cosplay and really care about the artistry of it versus the ones that are just kind of doing it just for attention. Um, sometimes there's just yeah, bad well, lighting or like like the hairline yeah. will be slightly off. Like, like I, I saw a cosplay of that same character from Final Fantasy VII by another cosplay. I'm not going to call them out specifically, right. but like the hairline wasn't even close and they clearly just uh, didn't care. And, you know, they're going to take some creative liberties, of course, but... Mm-hmm. Um, it was kind of one of those, did you just like wake up in the morning, put your thing on and take a, 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 sna- a Snapchat photo or something? I Well, I feel like it's, it's interesting because I feel like everyone can be a little different when it comes to that type of stuff. There's certain characters that I, you know, I'll cosplay uh, because people really want me to cosplay them and I'll just do it and I'll kind of get it over with. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm like this character's great, but it's not something that I am personally attached to. Extremely attached to. So yeah, so when I am very attached to a character, um yeah, my brain goes into like a different mode. Mm-hmm. Uh and if yeah, and if I don't get what I want <laughs> in a photo, um I, I do it until I do get what I want in a photo <laughs> and I reshoot it with new photographers or I go and I find better locations or I do it again. It's really interesting. Um, I don't know if everyone's like that. Right. Uh, but for me, I've been, I've been cosplaying for a while, but I've been modeling and I've been in the art world for longer. I went to school for classical. No, wow. I was about to say classical animation. My sister went to school for classical animation. <laughs> I went to school for, Musical theater. I have my bachelor's in okay. musical theater. Um, I studied singing, acting, dancing. I was in a dance company for years. I also did stunt work on TV and film. And so I've been like in this kind of creative medium for a very long time. I've just slowly kind of changed where I am within it. Um, but for me, it's just like I've been doing it for so long that I want things to be a certain way sure. and I have the means to do it now. So why would I, why would I not? Right. Like as a cosplayer who might just be starting out, you may not have those resources. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. And it, it can just be harder. But for me now, I, I can, <laughs> I am fortunate enough that I can just go somewhere and shoot something mm-hmm. if right. I want, like and- literally fly to a different country because I want to shoot this here and I want it to be as accurate as possible. And I can do that, which is crazy, like mm-hmm. to even think about. Right, but I, I do it. <laughs> I think it also ha- has to help, though, with your modeling background that you kind of have the yes. eyes for, you know, photography. You- you've seen probably, you know, thousands of pictures in your lifetime, and taken <laughs> of thousands. Of me and of everyone right, else. Right, 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 right. Yeah, and and have <laughs> taken thousands of photos, you know, just by yourself. So to have yes. that eye too. You know, where somebody getting into it may not have that knowledge, may not, you know, it, it, I suppose that kind of helps out too. Yeah, no, I uh, I can go through a set of myself, uh, like hundreds of photos. I can go through a set of myself and pick out like 20 images in like 15 minutes. I can narrow things down to what I personally think looks amazing and looks accurate or whatever it is, looks flattering for myself super fast. I tend to pick out all my edits, like photographers send me all the selections or I'm self shooting a lot right now. For example, today, uh, yesterday and the day before I, I self shot a cosplay and I send them out to be edited because mm-hmm. I don't have that much time to edit all my own content, but I send them to my photographers to edit, but I flip through all the images and just go, yep, nope, yep, nope. And it's like, crazy fast and it's because i've looked i've looked at my own face for far too long (laughs) and i know what looks good and what doesn't (laughs) it's kind of like i mean this is on a much smaller scale but it's kind of like when i do a snapchat photo i know raising the phone up certain angle i look good straight on Uh, yeah mm, it doesn't look quite (laughs) (laughs) it's just something i mean that's just something you just you know anyone who's taken you know, social media, like photos and trying to send it to people and look good. Like, yeah, you kind of know certain angles and filters that people like to use that can make you look good. Um, 
so yeah that's i mean i i'd always find the, the whole cosplay scene just just really interesting um because i mean i'm i'm a guy so i'm on the guy side of things and i see okay. <laughs> um i mean there's tons of great male cosplayers out there by the way guys I, oh my I mean, god yes there, there's, there's some amazing ones out there i mean we've seen them at e3 they're mm-hmm. just they're just oh, yeah. rocking um yep but like it, it it's always interesting because one thing I, I notice in the, uh, the the industry uh, from just a fan perspective is it, that always bothers me anyways is I, I you know the, the we bought e3 what three, four times three something times? like that three something four like times that? yeah uh, and I'll just notice there's like certain I, I guess stereotypes I, I suppose uh, about cosplayers and about men in general where they're just kind of staring and oogly eyeing. Um, and I always wonder, like, from your perspective, obviously as someone who likes to, to, to be in the sexier side and is, is confident in your own sexuality and, and, and your beauty, like, does that kind of stuff bother you? Like, when you just have a lot of people at public events kind of ogling you and maybe, I, I mean, I don't know what else they might do. You probably have your own horror stories, but. I mean, I definitely have horror stories. Yes, uh, many of them. But I would say, you know, just when it comes to people looking or admiring me for whatever reason, <laughs> whether it's, you know, strictly body parts or whatever. I really don't care. That's good. Um, I think you have to become obviously aware, but just okay with people looking at you and staring at you and and stuff like that. But it's obviously a much different story if, you know, they come up to you and touch you. I've seen some dudes. You know what I mean? So it's it's involved. very oh my gosh. I <laughs> I okay, I modeled all over the world. I've worked with Playboy with Maxim. Like I was with like Leonardo DiCaprio and Naomi Campbell in France for the Cannes Film Festival. I had the same security as Paris Hilton when she was doing her tour when she was DJing more. Like I have had I have been in crazy situations. And I think the funny thing is all of those things and situations with like amazing people and clubs and events have really made me as a person take no crap from anyone. So (laughs) I see a lot of cosplayers that the second somebody kind of touches them or makes them uncomfortable is acting inappropriate. I can see them like shut down. They don't know what to do. I am literally the opposite. I am like, don't you touch me. <laughs> and it throws people off. Um, I'm sure it does. Yeah. Because it, oh, uh, yeah. Because a lot of the cosplayers I, I've seen in person, like you could tell, like, they're, yeah. they get un- uncomfortable when the awkward situations mm-hmm. come up that, yeah, yeah they don't know what in to reality do. should, it's, it's, shouldn't happen. Mm-hmm. But yeah, people but it are does. people. And, and yeah. they do things that they shouldn't do. And, you know, you can't control how they act, but you can control how you react to it. And I, I, I exactly. it's something I always feel bad about when I see it happen, because um, I've seen it happen to a lot of females in in person. Anyways, I've seen it happen where they just get, um, like almost like discouraged. And I don't want like them yeah. to run from the meat. I mean, ultimately, if you can't handle that, you can't handle that. I understand that, but yeah, it's it's a lot, obviously. And and as someone who has dealt with it in in different forms for so long, you know, it, it took me a while too. Mm-hmm. I've even had men like be super creepy at like a friend's booth next to me, um, talking about like you know her butt or whatever in photos and and prints that she's selling like as a guest as a cosplayer and mm-hmm. and uh, you could see them they didn't know how how to deal with it security can't a lot of men don't pick up on on hints from women that they're like kind of uncomfortable not okay with situations yeah. right and I I've literally mm-hmm. had to pull men over I'm like oh you like booty. Come here. You, you like this? I shot this here. Oh my goodness, this is crazy. Like, da 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 da, talking about my body parts. Literally would make a man walk away with like $200 worth of prints mm. because I was comfortable talking about my body to him mm. and answering his questions when somebody else wasn't. Well, I mean, <laughs> and I'd make them go away. That, like, yeah, like, like, come to me like, like and be like, yeah, of, I'll take your money. Yeah, some of what people are looking at is like, <laughs> hey, yeah, they are looking at your body parts. They are. Yeah, really into yeah. it in, in a way, and they're willing to yeah. spend money. So yeah, and I just help them by like, by like 
making them get out of that uncomfortable situation, mm-hmm. right? And then and making crocodile. sure they're okay. Yeah, yeah. and then being yeah. like, oh, so no, you're not this comfortable type, are you? looking at the booty. Well, come here, <laughs> yeah. see this booty. Yeah, this I'll get shot. you out of that situation um, and I'll make him. 25 bucks is pretty great. Yeah, right. yeah literally, literally. <laughs> and I'm like, are you okay? Was that a bit much? Like, I understand. Well, don't touch you know? me. Look, it's cool. Yeah. Here, oh you my can gosh. take this home with you. Look at it all the time. Oh. I don't care what happens once you leave. I got your money. <laughs> yeah, that's something I get asked a lot, actually, is like, do you, you know, do you care what people do when they think about you? And I'm just like, my, my, I don't, I don't want to know. Yeah. I don't want to know. What? It's not people, like you're, people you're, do you're, you're an adult. stuff you over anything. People, yeah. Literally, anything. I don't want to know. <laughs> you know, when, when you when you're out in the world, you're out in the world, and you have people that like sometimes get turned on by animals and stuff. It's like you know what? People do what they do. It's up to. Yeah, them. I just don't want to know. No. If they want to pay me, great. But like, <laughs> they ain't doing it with me in person. I'm good. Literally, they, privacy of your own home. Do whatever you want. You know. Um, exactly. We, All good. <laughs> I mean, well, the thing is, you know, people always act like. Um, and, and this is a, a stereotype that comes up because, you know, men obviously um, tend to not always respect the boundaries. I, I feel as much uh, as I see. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I, I haven't talked to a male cosplayer in person, but I've seen male cosplayers. Um, but I guess I would just more add events that have more men than females to really know if they also go through that. Because uh, the only time I've seen um, males seem to be subjected to stuff like that is when they, they literally put themselves in that situation, like a male stripper. Obviously, they expect the woman to touch them and think certain things are going to happen because that's the job, that's the profession. They're trying to make a make money in that way. So I always feel like you know, everyone across the board does things in the privacy of their own home over different things. Let them be, let them be them. As long as it's not something that's like illegal, let them be them. You know. Yeah, yeah, but just yeah, and when you're out in public and and everything like that, just yeah, don't touch anyone. (laughs) Yeah, and, and I mean, this is just a general rule, guys. Like, guys, girls, yeah. unless they invite you <laughs> to specifically touch them, mm-hmm. don't, don't do it. it. And I know it can be hard because most people aren't going to come right out and say, hey, grab my butt. Well, mm-hmm. let me tell you, you probably oh. can't grab their butt. Yeah. Don't but I'm it. just saying, you'll know, okay? I've been at bars I, when, when I was single and, and flirting with women, and you want to know how I knew I could, you know, maybe put my arm on them somehow? Because they put my arm on that for me. Yeah. It's like, right. they're, like if they're into you, you'll know. Otherwise... Yeah, women women are pretty forward that way, yeah. I must confess. If you're, if you're yeah. afraid to talk to them and you're, like, oogling them, let me tell you, you're probably not welcome to touch them. Yeah. I'm just throwing True. that out there. Women, women are pretty <laughs> forward about it. Just because a woman, and this is another thing I say, a woman, man, anything, just because they dress yeah. sexy doesn't give you yeah. permission to do anything. Permission to look well, fine. If they're yeah, that's public, why you that got, fine, but. that's why you got all these, all of a sudden, right? All the conventions are popping up with the signs that say cosplay is not consent, right? Yeah. Like, it was this whole mm-hmm. thing that had so to not. start because. People think because you dress a certain yeah. way, it's, it's, consen- it's like consent to look not anything right. else yeah exactly yeah it's mm-hmm. i don't i don't know people people are weird but yeah yeah i and i i it, it's hard for me to to imagine you know being part of part of that scene if i would ever be comfortable with it but then again you know it, it, it's something you get used to you know you, you you've been all over in the industry dealt with a lot of different things um so for you it's a, a lot more unique situation than it might be for some other cosplayers <laughs> that maybe haven't had all those experiences um yeah to, to get that comfortable in their body and to get that comfortable with the way people are going to look at you and uh, realize hey you know i can make some money off of this but at the same point i will set the limits i will stick to those limits i'm not afraid to tell a guy off it doesn't matter oh my god they, they might be someone who will buy 500 hundred dollar in prints i don't care they touch me get away right. yeah right. yeah not okay totally it's not worth it not okay <laughs> not okay um anyways uh Talk about more about games because obviously you are a gamer. Um, I know yeah. so on one of your recent streams you play Genshin Impact. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I am obsessed <laughs> with Genshin Impact. I don't know, it's just like okay, I'm a huge Zelda girl. Yep, huge, huge Zelda girl. Um, and for me, it's just like filling that void until I wait for Breath of the Wild two. Uh, 
Have I you, would like uh, some so, more news on that. Yeah, <laughs> by yeah, the way, I think we yeah. Yeah. did say there was going to be news on that this year. So yes, yes, we'll see. That's good. I can't wait. I can't wait for that. Um, oh, so w- one game I can I can suggest to you. I don't know if you've you've checked it out yet. If you really like Zelda games a lot, which I already mm-hmm. know you do, because I literally used to yes. turn in on every episode of Game Over Jesse's podcast you were on because. <laughs> I loved your your Zelda takes. Like, oh, it was great. Like, I I've, I've heard Jesse talk for like fifteen years about Zelda. All right, there's nothing he's gonna say I haven't heard. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be completely honest, but um, so it's nice to get other perspectives. Um, so, a game that I really got into towards the end of last year uh, that I, that has a nice Zelda feel to it is actually uh, Immortals: Phoenix Rising. <gasps> Someone mentioned that recently. It's very it's an Ubisoft game. And it's, uh, it plays okay. a lot like Breath of the Wild. Hmm. Okay, it is okay. Really, so does Genshin Impact in a way too. But like so this one really, <laughs> and it's got a kind of a comedy aspect to it. Um, oh, okay. Greek mythology and all that. It's really, it's nice. really an interesting take. But it, like, it's got all that that, that classic Zelda combat, the puzzles. Um, mm. Oh, it, it's really good. Um, I've been recently getting back into it because I never finished it, and now they have new DLC out for it. Uh, oh, I see. Okay. But I'm like, you know, anyone who's a big Zelda fan, I'm always like, I'm telling you, give it a chance. I know sometimes oh, Ubisoft okay. games aren't all the cracked up to be, but the, this one <laughs> it was made by a small team on the side, and it is really good. And the DLC, oh, okay, the DLC that just came out is basically like an entirely new game. Oh, you play geez. As a completely new wow. character. You go into Chinese mythology. Oh, oh, that's dope. Okay, yeah, so it's really cool, and I can't wait. I'm hoping like one of the DLC packs will be Japanese because I'm I'm all into that Japanese culture. So that'd be really cool to get. Oh, okay. Some. Anyways, I just I want to throw that out there. Like, I, anyone who's a Zelda <laughs> fan, I'm like, hey, have you played this? I'm just telling you, I'm I don't work for Ubisoft. They're not yeah. paying me. I swear. I don't have any. I did. I did at one channel. point. I did at one point. I uh, did I did a promo. I did an act when I was acting an acting promo for the original Watch Dogs. Oh sure. Oh nice. Years and years and years ago. Yeah, that was that was fun. I used to do a lot of stuff for acting that involved like video games and everything. Kind sure. of before. I had this weird period in my life where I was working so, so, so much um, to get through college and mm. school and everything that I yep. just didn't really play video games for several years. And then when I was modeling and, and I kind of got to work for myself a little bit, that's when I like was able to dive like back into video games as much as I wanted to. So there's a point in my life where I think I like skipped a lot. It's really good things, unfortunately. It happens to be like I have a PlayStation <gasps> Five right now, and I literally okay. have not played like PlayStation ever in my life. Oh, There's so really? much I missed. Well, see, I was a Nintendo <laughs> child. Yep, same. Mm-hmm. I have a Sega, Sega, and then Nintendo, um, and that was it. We had like an N sixty four, um, and a Sega Genesis, and we never got a PlayStation because. We had Nintendo systems, yep. mm-hmm. right? If you were so Nintendo parents, back then, they're so yeah, no, no, nope, exactly. No. It's like, oh, we have we have a system. We're getting the games on the system. So I grew up playing Nintendo games, and I would watch my friends. I would go to my friends' houses, and they'd have like a PlayStation, and so I'd see them playing like certain games and everything. But it just never really interested me. It wasn't until I had like I think a PlayStation Two. My brother got me Final Fantasy Seven for christmas one year he's like i think you would like <laughs> and i was I think like you are correct, yes <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> and that was like my introduction into final fantasy which i'm also a huge 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 fan of so yeah it was it's really interesting but for me nostalgia wise it's wait what yeah i have the remake downloaded on my PlayStation 5 because they had it on PS Plus. But I've literally never played it. I played Final Fantasy 1 through 6. It went to Sony, and I never had a Sony platform. Oh, so my I just goodness. never played it. Um, I well, played eight. Oh, my God. I played 8 on PC, but everyone's like, 8's not good. 7's the one. I'm like, well... It wasn't on PC. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my god! I wow. played Crystal Chronicles. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That's that's the only okay, one I've okay. played. <laughs> well, well, Square Enix has like all the compilations coming out for Final Fantasy VII remake and everything, which is crazy. And but my fiance actually never played the original Final Fantasy VII either. So I was. Um, I game a lot here on my computer downstairs, and our PlayStation Four is upstairs. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would be chilling watching him play 
uh, well, I play on stream like afterwards, but um, it was fun watching him play through seven with zero like knowledge mm -hmm. of it at all. So that was fun. Yeah, what sucks um, for me is I know like the major plot twists. So like, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's different than if I would have played it as a kid not knowing. But at the same point, right. like, I'm not invested in the character. So I'm like, okay, I've seen this plot twist a billion times. Why does it matter? Oh, well, I'm not yeah. invested. You know, it'd be different. Right. If I'm so, yeah, it's it's huge. It's a huge. That's the thing, right? It's a huge difference. If and you I'm have curious what my experience is going to be with the, with the with the remake, since I don't yep. have a preconceived notion of what Final Fantasy VII is or was. Um, so this is a, literally a new game for me, and I'm I'm going to be. It's going to be very. It's curious. also different. Like, it, yeah, it's way different. I've been told. So yeah, um, it, it's going to be interesting to see, like, because I'm basically going to experience Final Fantasy VII first with the remake. Then yes. I'll probably go back and check out the old one, and then I'll probably end up giving up because I won't like it as much. I'm just assuming. <laughs> I, 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 I'm assuming. I don't know. I, don't know. I, don't I mean, know. I I grew up playing lots of Final Fantasy games, but it's still right, like, right. Uh, yeah, but even yeah. Like now, I don't really go back and play the old old games anymore. Um, right. Yeah. Exactly. I think it's just because there's so many new games always coming out that I'm always. Like, that's all. My, that's the thing. That's the thing. It's just we are so, and I, I get. I get in fights with people about this. <laughs> I literally had a girl like call me every name in the book um, because she was complaining about Genshin Impact. Why? And I literally said like, you don't have to play it. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to play like, it. Like there are other games. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> me. You don't have to play it. Like you can just not play it. Yeah. <laughs> she... I, don't, I don't get what the big deal is. <laughs> <laughs> lost it on me. Um <laughs> <laughs> literally called me all these terrible names like blocked me on everything wow. was just calling like just it was so she was so crazy just because um, you don't want to play a game i because you know and i understand i i have really big social medias um comparatively yeah. to, to a lot of people and i i'm sure me coming at somebody who might i don't know if she thought i was cool or whatever but like i imagine me coming at somebody else and being like, you don't have to play the game hmm. might, you know, freak somebody out because <laughs> I'm a pretty straightforward personality. It's just who I am. But uh, hmm. yeah, it, it, it was very interesting from there. But I just I'm the type of person that I'm like, yo, there's so many games. There's so much amazing content. We are blessed yeah, with no, for sure gorgeous animation and musical scores that are ridiculous and just constant updates and dlc and all this stuff these companies yes they're in it to make money but at the same time like there's so much stuff to keep us entertained and i get really irked when people like complain about things well, yeah. <laughs> so and i really that, like well in entertainment in general today i, I kind of feel like we are in oh. we are in kind of like maybe the possible heyday of entertainment at this moment ah, um, we are so blessed so many tv shows so many mm -hmm. movies yeah granted yeah. lots mm -hmm. of different streaming services and all the yeah. all the money can add up but the point is there's so many options so much content uh video yeah. game wise between digital and now we have streaming services as well and you know physical games and indie games and triple a and first party and like all this crazy stuff yeah. happening in the industry where there's it's truly something for everybody mm -hmm. right now yes um yes and, and for those out there that obviously, you know, think things are bad or like uh, like what I deal with a lot on my end, it's just like a lot of console war. People feel <laughs> like they got to put down other platforms to make themselves feel better about what they bought. Mm -hmm. um, and I find it interesting because like I own everything. I I'm obviously primarily a Nintendo channel. I'm a Nintendo person. I talk a lot of Nintendo stuff. This is a Nintendo podcast. Uh, but I talk about everything. I mean, I just talked about PlayStation, how I, hey, I haven't experienced any of it, but now I have a PlayStation 5 and I'm playing PlayStation games. Uh, exactly. I don't. I, I you know, I, I just find the whole industry sometimes, and, and gamers, uh, maybe it's just people in general. Maybe that, that's really what the it is. Not really a gaming thing. I think people in general aren't accepting of other people that have different opinions and different tastes than their own. Uh, oh yeah. Um. The world. You know. I think it goes together with everything happening mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are just not very happy mm -hmm. and obviously yeah. obviously the internet is the internet and it's the yes. easiest place for you to just throw it yeah. and and 
a lot of the times you don't feel or or get any sort of repercussions Mm -hmm. um for what you say and do so i feel like right and there's also no context to anything either so yes you don't you know they may have a small outburst you know an outburst on the internet you don't know what they went through before that outburst you don't know what they're going through after the outburst you don't know why they had the outburst but yeah all you see is that is what they're talking about it could be they're letting out their frustrations right uh, uh, what might be a yeah. minor way like someone might be yelling at me that you know Nintendo sucks or this and that they're like we had someone on, our, on my last live stream talking about how like oh Nintendo's not consumer friendly and they're this and they're that and they're this and they're that and I'm like <laughs> okay I'm not saying right. you're wrong about yeah. anything but like you're on a Nintendo channel how do right. you expect me to respond to that Yeah, like I'm not gonna sit here and open fire on Nintendo right now. <laughs> right. Like, I mean, I'm, I, you're, I, I'm not saying you don't have valid points, but like, why does it matter to you? And you've like, also, you've also play had, what you want to play, go enjoy what you enjoy. You've also had plenty yeah. of videos calling Nintendo out. Oh yeah. I call Nintendo all the time, but <laughs> we've called Nintendo out on this podcast. That, it, I mean, to be honest, I probably stunt the growth of my own channel because I'm not fanboy ish mm. enough. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I feel like with anything, and I feel like a lot of people don't get this is, you know, if you, truly love something or want something to be its best whether it's like nintendo or a person or whatever you you don't follow them blindly you know Mm -hmm. you want them to do well you want them to see out like to put out amazing stuff but you're also there to be like hey not a fan of this can you kind of not do this can you fix this can you change this you input your opinion in a respectful way Mm -hmm. right because you want them or the being or whatever to be everything you want it to be right there's no i feel if you follow something blindly to the point where you think everything is great it, it's just not gonna be good and that's why consoles that's why having nintendo and xbox mm-hmm. and sony like playstation is good because they're in competition with each other and if there was only one they wouldn't care <laughs> because oh. they own everything anyway right. and they wouldn't grow and they wouldn't be constantly trying to make sure that they have better stuff for the consumer to buy. So they, we need competition in everything. Good oh. competition, friendly mm-hmm. competition, whatever. So that these companies are constantly like really, really going for it. And I feel like Nintendo knows this, especially um, like with their history and like the wii u and how that was just a hot mess um i believe there was like an article recently i forget uh who within nintendo said it but they're like they know that you know if they mess up like one more time it could be the end for them because it's almost been that way before oh where they do something amazing and then they do not and it literally it it was was furukawa he uh the current ceo he said he said things like you know, every year is do or die. That's the way yeah. I view things. That's the way we view things internally at Nintendo. No matter how good we're doing, I've been here 20 years. I've seen this company fall off a cliff off of every success we've had. We're trying not to fall off a cliff right now, but, you know, this happens. <laughs> we have to be careful with everything we do, and we have to keep pushing. We have to, not, Game-wise, hardware-wise, we got to keep pushing, which is very interesting because um, before him, like, like with Satoru Iwata, you know, rest in peace, uh, and prior CEOs, you never really see them be so forward about it, being like, hey, look, we know we're not perfect. We know we make yeah. mistakes. We're trying not to make those same mistakes. But, you know, things happen. Nothing lasts forever. Um, enjoy it while it's here. And we're going to keep trying to make you keep enjoying it for as long as we can. Yes. Yeah. I like that exactly. attitude. It, it, it's like an honest look. You know, internally yeah. at what you're doing instead of always being like, oh, we're good. We're at the top of our game, making more <laughs> money than ever. We're awesome. Which yep. I got to admit, as a Nintendo <laughs> fan, it feels like Sony acts that way sometimes when they're on top. <laughs> like, we're awesome. We're good. And yeah. they get really full of themselves. But that's, right, uh, that's right. the Nintendo bias coming out as well. <laughs> but, like, there are some things they said, uh, mostly about the PlayStation 3 era, there are some things they said heading into that that were kind of like, so you think you're the king shit, and then you released the PlayStation 3 and watched it flop for the first year. I'm just saying, like... I don't even remember <laughs> PlayStation 3. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Shots oh, no, I'm, no, I'm, I'm serious. 
Oh, I mean I that's even, okay. They're getting they're getting yeah. the online web store here, or the online store here in like July, so a bunch of places to do games won't be able to be bought three? anymore. <laughs> was there? Wait, maybe Sony's deleting their PlayStation Three history now. I don't know. I had a PlayStation Two, and then I think Skip and then three. I got a four. Yeah, yeah. totally. Did I you go, did yeah, you go I Xbox could... or PC, or was that like your hiatus years of college and not? I think it might have been like yeah, hiatus ish. I actually, so I actually um, got into Final Fantasy, right? Yeah. And I ended up getting like a PSP and then a mm. PS Vita, and I was playing like Final Fantasy like one, two, three, four, like on those, mm. like mm. while I was in school and working. I remember vividly um, playing it on like public transit on buses, mm. like playing Final Fantasy like two. Like getting through all the stories on like PS Vita and stuff, so I think that's why. <laughs> I don't. Right. Think I, yeah. I don't think I ever had any any interaction with the PlayStation Three. I can't even recall oh, <laughs> anything boy. about it, where I was. My, my only I, so my last interaction with PlayStation Three was breaking <laughs> mine with a sledgehammer. Um, Ooh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was. I did a live stream oh, where no. I, I uh, liquid metal cooled my uh, Xbox Series X, and I said, if I successfully pull this off, I'm sledgehammering the PlayStation Three. Well, I pulled it off, so I wow. sledgehammered the PlayStation Three. And the only reason I had the PlayStation Three was because of MLB The Show. Um, started becoming a thing, and that was like the only baseball game in the world for a while. So I had needed a Sony pl- platform to play baseball games. Um, not true anymore, but uh, so yeah, I, some people cry like got pretty mad at me for doing that. Like, there's only so many of those still al- around. I'm like, all right. <laughs> I mean, I see it on the internet right now for forty bucks. So it. it oh I wow. Think still, I think there's still plenty of them around. Um, I think mm-hmm. the world will survive without the, my one PlayStation Three. Yeah, it, it might uh, not. <laughs> it might not. I just it look, might not. I brought, yeah. I brought too many. Hugs. You're the reason why the world is the way it is. Oh my god. Ah, oh, you bastard. I can't imagine what would have happened if I would have did it to a Wii. Oh god! Aww. Nintendo fans would have got so. Why is he? I'm like, there's a hundred million of these things. What are we worried about? Your channel would have tanked. <laughs> I think I did oh, no. lose like 40 subscribers off of that. It was. It was. No. It is what it is. You know. <laughs> uh, so I guess let's let's transition to the, into. Um, we talked a bit about like new games and old games. Like, what's some upcoming games that we're all kind of looking forward to? Because. Um, I mean, we just talked about the industry is in a really great spot right now with so many options uh, and so many games. Heck, new generations of platforms and PC gaming is always relevant. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, gaming on phones even, you know, mm-hmm. that's that, that's the thing that my, my fiance loves gaming on phones. So, you know, what are some, like, Eric, what, what are some games you might be looking forward to here? I, I'm, I'm going to take the obvious away. Breath of the Wild 2, I well, mean, that's just... Yeah, no. No. Blanket statement, no, no. probably the most hyped game yeah. for all yeah, of us obviously. combined right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I love me the Lego games. So Ooh. the Lego Star Wars coming just out. Reminding me, of Luke, uh, dude, I think yeah, there it comes out spring. Leak, there's a leaked release date for it right now. Really? Yes. Ooh. Oh. Um. Oh, well, I just saw it. It's it something. It said the last I looked, it was spring. So, which would be well, sometime I just, soon. I just saw a news article on this today. <laughs> It was a, it was a, a yeah. piece of advertising material at a GameStop. But I remember lo- watching that, you know, going into the thing, hoping we could play it at E3. But um, that wasn't the case. It was a just a video of them playing it and whatnot, and which was still really cool because uh, the the mass open openness of the game and you can go anywhere, do anything between the nine the nine movies. It's oh, freaking wow. amazing. So. Yeah, we, we we saw what the private demo behind the scenes at E three for it. Uh, it was wow. I, I honestly like I've I got a little tired of the Lego games over the years because they're really samey. But right. then they showed this behind the scenes. I thought like, whatever. We both like Star Wars and Lego games. Let's just go check mm-hmm. it out. And I came away being like, this isn't just a Lego game. Like it has some of the Lego game elements, the collecting bricks and all this. But like. Mm, this is like a legitimate like open world Star Wars experience that just Play blows well. my mind. And I'm a big Star Wars guy, so Okay. I've been I've been really trying to see when that's coming out. Is there another game you're looking forward to, Eric? Uh That was the one I looked up. That, that was the big that was the big <laughs> yeah. one for you? Yeah, that was the one that I was looking through the games and that was the one that stood out to me the most. Any interest in Mario Golf? 
Ah, uh, yeah, 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 for and sure. Pokemon Snap. Yes. Well, that, uh, Pokemon, Pokemon Snap, Snap, probably... Snap is one of those that I'll probably, you know me, I'll probably end up watching you play more than more than more actually than play. owning well, well, it. Well, what but... Mario Golf? I know. We, oh yeah. It's got the RPG no, that one's elements. that one's definitely probably going to be a buy for sure. Yeah, especially Aww. those RPG elements. Check out. Yeah, like the old school. Because I was a fan of the original one, and yeah. So hopefully they can not, not screw this up. Not mess anything up. But it's Nintendo and kind of Mario sports games, which yeah, we <laughs> all know how that goes. 50, it's it's fifty fifty. Not sometimes more like twenty eighty. Um, <laughs> I mean, I really okay. Mario Tennis was great, guys. Like, but they that single player was not. Well, and I've heard was not it, and I've heard the content in that wasn't a whole lot. No, the gameplay is great. They nailed the gameplay. It's the best Mario Tennis gameplay ever, but the single player mode just ain't it. So I'm hoping they learned from that and made the Mario Golf single player mode. Like they, it looks like they did. They made a full RPG. They claim. Yeah. So we'll we'll see. Um, uh, Holly, what what's some games you're looking forward to? Okay. Well, obviously. Right, you guys already said it. Uh, Breath of the Wild Two. Mm-hmm. I, I, it was just crazy that they even are doing that. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I'm surprised after. I, okay, so I was initially surprised when they announced it. Like my my reaction on my channel, I almost had a heart attack. It was yeah, it was yeah. insane. Was but also, like, no. I, should I have been surprised? Like, did the game sold twenty million? There's been no Zelda yeah. game close to that. Clearly, they I were going to make a sequel. Yeah. I'm a huge, so my favorite Zelda is Majora's Mask. Okay. Good. Um, I love dark, sad stories. There's so many like little side stories in Majora's Mask that are just so sad mm. and depressing. Yes. And I freaking love it. <laughs> um, I love games that just make me bawl my eyes out. Like, just sadness. Love it. Um, and Because it feels like so reality. Majora- yeah, well, yeah. Like, you deal with sad bad. shit all the time. So everyone's always like, well, I, would, I go to games for happy, but it's like, but sometimes I get no, happy by I other go, people fixing their sad shit. Yeah. I go I go to games for sadness. Um, Explains why I you like Final Fantasy VII. Exactly. <laughs> love it. Final Fantasy X as well. Mm. Oh, oh, sadness. Um, so Majora's Mask was huge for me. I absolutely loved it. So when I, when, when I came to the realization... That Breath of the Wild 2, obviously, it's like the same engine. I, I'm sure they're trying to get it done pretty fast. Obviously, it's not a year project, right? Majora's yeah. Mask was a was a one-off. You you have a year to make a game, see what you can do. And yeah. it ended up being amazing. It was crazy. Um, but the fact that Breath of the Wild 2 is supposed to be like really dark. I yeah, was like... Based on the initial trailer, yeah. It looks yes, really... Like, yes, I remember yeah. saying, this is dark as hell. Yeah. I remember the yeah. exact phrase. Come, I'm like... And I never thought yeah. I'd say that about Breath of the Wild because, like, Breath of the Wild, the original game, like, yeah, it, it tries to give you this it's ominous sad. feeling, but sad, the whole game isn't but, really that sad. Yeah, it's... Well, you don't know that... You, you don't really experience any friendships with the characters because they're already all dead yeah. um and yeah, like, uh, oh this is cool oh, yeah, yeah i like these side characters yeah. but like okay the champions yeah, are great but i'm not that. connected to them right exactly you know? exactly so it's, it's a little different um but yeah they even i think there's even quotes of them saying like this is just supposed to be really dark so i'm totally about that um there's more octopath traveler type games coming out within the yeah. series uh, yeah project Triangle and- strategy Yes, that's, that's exactly. not yep. that's not within Octopath though. That's the same graphics that's by Square, but it's not it's not in the Octopath Traveler world. There's yep, actually well, other oh. games that yeah. are already in production. There's a mobile Octopath Traveler game yeah, coming one, out. I think it released in Japan another, already, the mobile one. Yeah, and there's at least one more. There's there's a series of games that they're doing on Octopath that have nothing to do with Project Triangle. Yeah. Interesting. Um, same company, same style. Obviously, it's gorgeous, but not connected. Besides that, um, also, so no, I'm excited that for more is The same people who made the recently released Bravely Default too. Yes. So that yes. studio, whatever the whatever section of that studio is, really on a roll right now. They're they're crushing. I it. love I love that type of style. Um, I'm a huge like farm simulator. <laughs> Type oh, person. Hey, nothing wrong with that. Um, yeah. Stardew Valley and stuff say, like that. Oh, Stardew Valley. God. That's got to be one. Star- yep. 
love it. I'm so I, let me tell you, uh, not something I love, but something I'm extremely angry about is they keep making Harvest Moon games that oh. are like 3D, crappy character avatar. They look nothing like the original Harvest Moons, right? Stardew mm-hmm. looks like Harvest Moon when so, I was a child. Yeah, I want so them the, to make That's Moon. because um, the studio that made Harvest oh. Moon doesn't make Harvest Moon anymore. Exactly. And I'm very angry about it to this day. Every time I see there's a new one, literally like a few weeks ago, or a week ago, Nintendo put out a new trailer for Harvest Moon. And I was just raging in my couch. So angry that, again, the game looked like crap. And I just can't wait for the day where Harvest Moon gets what it needs and it looks like Octopath Traveler. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I would like that (laughs) in my life. Um... But also Genshin Impact, okay? I love it. The game, I think, will be like a five or six year game, um, approximately. There's two out of seven regions that have been released. Um, The game's only six months old, and I believe they're doing a new region every six months or so. Okay, interesting. Oh my god, the game is huge. The world is huge. The uh, music is... uh I was going to mention something. Um, yeah. Going back to your Harvest Moon point, it took me a second to look it up because I couldn't remember. Okay. The original uh-huh. team uh, making it, it actually has Story of Seasons that just came out. Mm. That's actually, like, basically exactly what you want Harvest Moon to be because they just remade Harvest Moon. Right. Like it's it just not called be. Harvest Moon yeah, anymore. They yeah. Can't, they can't use that name. But that studio came back with Story of Seasons. And I guess, uh, what did that just, I think that just came out. Um, right. Yeah, because this is the team they made: Harvest Moon, Harvest Moon Game Boy, Harvest Moon sixty four, um, and then Story of C- Yeah, they made a bunch of Harvest Moons before that series. That series was sold. Um, so yeah, uh, Story of Seasons. But it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not top down, cute little sixteen bit sprite. <laughs> it's still like that weird three D ugliness. It's like Pokemon. <laughs> That's like not, yeah. you know, it's like, it's like sword and shield. It's, it's oh, like half yeah. done. It's like you a know? TV style. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm not here for it. I'm not here for it. Yeah. Yeah. So. You, you want, you want that old school Stardew Valley style. Yeah. Yeah. Stardew yeah. Valley obviously is, is right up that, right up the alley with that. Yeah. 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 I see, and I, I love, saying, yeah. I love playing Stardew Valley. Um, yeah. yeah. I, will, I will say there was one, what was that one Harvest Moon multiplayer game I played at E3? That game was a little bit fun. Um, now that wasn't the, your your sixty bit, but it was like a collecting competition. I can't remember. Yeah, but at the same point in time, you were together. Yeah, it was. I can't remember. It was a really. I, I, that was like the one Harvest Moon game the new people made. I'm like, oh, okay, this is kind of fun. Maybe it's like a mobile game. And we got a key, uh, keychain sheep. Oh yeah, with key, it. keychain sheep. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was not a sixteen bit sheep. I'm sorry to yeah. disappoint you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm really. I don't know. I'm really. I'm really picky uh, about like my animations and stuff. I don't know why. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm just. I'm yeah. I'm excited about Breath of the Wild, and I'm excited about Genshin. It was really weird because I feel like as somebody who loves Nintendo and who loves Zelda, and I feel like a lot of people were like this when Genshin released their trailer. They obviously made it look very Zelda-like, very Breath of the Wild-like. And I feel like so. Mihoyo is so smart, and I, and I can see this now, that they did that intentionally to stir up, like, controversy. Because people are like, what the heck is this game? Never heard of it before. And it's a Chinese developer, like, what do you mean? So I feel like they did it on purpose. So that people would be like, oh, what's the Zelda ripoff? Mm-hmm. And then it turned out to be this <laughs> Not exactly amazing. Zelda ripoff, yeah. Yeah, obviously, games have elements that other games have, right? Something works, people copy it, right? Game developers yeah. have been doing that for centuries. It's just how it goes. Um, you're not stealing. It's it's uh, okay. Here, this like, anyone who gets right? mad at Genshin Impact about that, because I remember that controversy. Guys, Dude. literally, Pokemon Legends Arceus copied shot for shot the Breath oh of the Wild trailer yeah. to hype you up. I know, I get it. You can say, oh, that's okay because Nintendo owns the IP. That's fine. But I'm just saying, that, like, yeah. let's just difference. be honest. It, people are going to take advantage of Breath of the Wild being massively popular. That's just 
exactly and 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 genshin did that and they did it extremely well and now they have made like billions of dollars in six months yeah i mean um, when you play the game guys i don't know if anyone has yeah. i've tried it out it, it doesn't play like breath of the wild it, it's its own game very much yeah, its own it's, game it just kind of yeah. used the aesthetic <sighs> And some of the world to kind of get you to be like, hey, what, let me check this. Yeah, like, get you in there. <laughs> yeah, let me <laughs> just, I gotta see. Topic. I want to go get angry at this ripoff. And then you play it. Oh, I, wait a second. Yeah, you're Whoa, like, hold literally, up a second. Literally, what is I was this? like, this game is great. I, I like this. And now I play it every single day because <laughs> it's a freaking gacha game. And yeah. you log in and you and get, gotcha. you get <laughs> things every day. Exactly. <laughs> you get gems every day for logging in and here i am every single time <laughs> there you go yeah. but also though, I, it's okay. terrible yeah to a certain extent though that could almost get you in trouble though too because you know people coming into the game expecting it to be like breath of the wild because you kind of to a certain extent almost advertise it to be that way and then when it's yeah. completely not you know that that could turn some people off and you run the risk of of you know, well, messing I think with what a whole lot of people. Is, I think what happened with Genshin but, Impact because I, I remember covering it at the time because there was a lot of people getting mad at them thinking, man, Nintendo needs to strike this game down. I think what happened is people who tried it out weren't curious to see if it was like Breath of the Wild. I think they were they they wanted to try it so they could attack the game mm-hmm. and be yeah. like, see this is take it down. And then they tried it. They're like, oh wait, this is not. What we right. It's ve- it 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 becomes very different very fast, um, and it's a wonderful, well thought out game. And like I said, like the music is ridiculous. Like I literally compare it to Square Enix mm. and Final Fantasy soundtracks. I believe in like ten years, people are gonna go back to like the soundtracks from Genshin and have the same sort of vibes that like I get now from like final fantasy 10 and 7 and zelda even right ocarina oh, of time sure. like i was even listening they just put out a new thing last night for one of the areas um like an orchestrated score and i was like this is insane <laughs> like this is yeah literally i it's, it's, it was twelve thirty at night guys and i was literally <laughs> in my bed crying that like okay. and, and my fiance is in the other room doing his dailies and i'm in bed like this on my phone just like that reminds me <laughs> of uh <laughs> So crying when skyward sword <laughs> came out and it was the first ever orchestrated um oh. zelda music by uh from nintendo themselves there's been reorchestrations and stuff but like the actual game features orchestrated music and i i had a review copy of it at the yeah time. um and like i'm kind of glad that my uh my my now fiance who I, I i met back then and started to date that wasn't living with me yet because I was literally crying to this video game soundtrack, and I'm like, she's not a gamer. How do I explain this to you? That, yeah. like, this franchise that's been there with me since yes. I was a little kid now has, like, the violins playing and all, like, this crazy yeah. stuff happening that's just make, pulling at my heartstrings. And, like, exactly. you hear Zelda exactly. all the way backwards, and you're like, what is happening? This is, you don't get it. You weren't there to experience this with me. <laughs> but I'm like, it's not your fault. No. It's okay. You have things you're probably into too. <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, so, some games I'm looking forward to. Uh, it's kind of a, a hodgepodge of a lot of different platforms. So, uh, new Pokemon Snap, day one for me. I've been waiting for a new Pokemon Snap game since I was. A kid. I love Pokemon Snap, so I'm there with you. Yeah. I, I played. That. I'm a huge like. Like, like I said, like Harvest Moon and, and very mm-hmm. chill games. And that's um, a chill game. It's the chillest of uh, games. Like taking taking photos of mm. beautiful scenery. I, I like I sorry I keep mentioning Genshin Impact, but I can't <laughs> tell you how many hours I've spent just like taking photos. <laughs> this is great. I, I'm pretty sure Breath of the Wild one way or another has come up in every podcast episode for like Oh, yeah. yeah, like the last okay. since, uh, since it came out. <laughs> since it came yeah. out, you know, so but, like, there's really, those oh. games you can't seem to let go. You're always yeah, referencing yeah. No, yeah. for sure. Yeah, um, but no, like Pokemon Snap. Oh man, I played that so much as a yep. kid. So I'm I'm happy. I'm not a huge Pokemon person, only because even though I'm a Nintendo person, I never had a Game Boy. Oh, sure. uh, okay, yep. Never, never yep. had one. If you didn't have that, up. it was never really hard to get into Pokemon. Yep. I only had my N64. That was mm. it. Well, and Sega and stuff like that, but yeah. So Sega. I just kind of skipped yeah, right. out on Pokemon. I'm about to uh, like putting the sound effect in then. That's yeah, right. but I got Sega. Sega. <laughs> no, I, whatever. Yeah, yeah. This podcast is going to make money off ads anyway. So, 
Um, <laughs> it literally, I think, I think the most money out of podcast episodes ever made is like seventy-two cents. Woo! Woo! Wow! You're rich. You got, you got like yeah. three thousand views an episode, seventy-two cents. Congratulations! Wow! Well, but, but there's oh like man. twenty minute average view time. It, nope, too bad. <laughs> YouTube's a funny place. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to the new Pokemon Snap. Uh, just takes me back to my childhood. It's a chill game. Uh, it's one I could just kind of bust out. I, you know, it, it's one of those things where when Pokemon Go became so huge, I always thought it was kind of cool to you know take screenshots. Uh, Pokemon, like, out the real world. Now you get to do it, like, in their world again. Really looking forward to that. Uh, we have uh, Mario Golf. Talked about that earlier. I'm, I'm looking forward to that just because okay. I, I was really into the, the old Game Boy one. And even some of, like, the, the, the what's that new mode they made? That, that speed up mode? Oh, yeah. The, what, yeah, the, like, the rush mode. The rush yeah. mode or whatever. That looked really cool. So try that out. Plus, like, I, I fully admit, guys, I've been playing this game on my phone the last few days called, uh, what's it called? Golf something. It's, a, it's one of those Ooh. mini golf games. Golf Battle. Ah. Um, and I just got to say, <laughs> I think it's because I'm so excited for Mario Golf that I needed yeah. some sort of golf, some sort of golf game. So yeah. I got this arcade multiplayer golf thing going on. And they're supposedly online with Man. this. We'll see if it's any good. Um, I'm amazing. very skeptical after the way they handled online with Mario Party that the online with this is going to be good. But Okay. We'll see. Uh, other games, I mean, uh, you know, obviously the aforementioned Breath of the Wild 2, I think it's hard not to at least give it a shout out even though i'm not going to talk about it beyond that yeah um right but i'm you know i'm just I'm kind of glad to set this list here and there's there's a bunch of games i'm really looking forward to. i mean mlb the show just talked about how i owned a playstation 3 earlier specifically for it it's funny i own a playstation now and now it's multi-platform now you're gonna get it for next box yeah, yeah. Play it. but i have one anyways so i still don't know which platform i'm yeah. buying that on because that comes out pretty soon um another game this is a shout out to pc evil geniuses 2 oh uh, Evil Geniuses was a, a RTS game on PC from like way back in the day, early 2000s, maybe even the 90s. Um, and now they finally have a sequel coming out, and apparently it looks really, really good from what I can see. So I'll probably, I might wait for reviews on it because I'm very particular with my RTS games these days because a lot of them, when they make these sequels, these long out sequels, so the old games end up not really capturing the feel. Uh, but at least from the gameplay I've seen, it looks good. Um, another uh, game I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to a lot. Uh, we got Resident Evil Village. Uh, okay. I mean, I don't play a lot of horror games, but uh, I was sold. The whole Dracula I, vibe, yeah, vampire vibe it. going on. I'm I'm there. I'm sold. <laughs> I'm sold. I'm not a scary game person. Not not in the slightest. People are like, you know, play this. I'm like, nope. <laughs> well, that gives you the best stream reactions when you're not into it. It's like it's yeah. like oh no uh, yeah I don't I like these games be. and the reasons you don't like them is exactly why it's entertaining to watch. When you, when I would, you, yeah, I would not last a day. Oh my goodness. When you crap yourself on stream, <laughs> <laughs> you become yeah, uh, legendary. Yeah, yeah. legendary. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm um, not down for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Bio Mutant game I've always thought looks really, really interesting. We'll, we'll see. We, I need to see a bit more on that. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Interesting. Um, oh yeah, yeah. That, okay. that game for PlayStation Five is like I think maybe the biggest game coming out for it uh, anytime soon. Um, I'm also really interested in Lord of the Rings Gollum. One, I'm a Lord of the Rings fan, um, but Gollum okay. is a next gen game that's also coming to Switch, and it's one of the only next gen games we know is also coming to Switch. So I I, I think it's got to be there... 2022, but. I was like, I don't even know what I'm, what, Gollum game. Yeah. It, 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 I it, have not even seen that. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it, it, I watched the opening trailer for it. It looks good. But we'll, again, we're not going to see it. it. It just got delayed. Wow. So I'm not sure when we're going to see it again. Okay. But it looks okay. really, really good. Um, you know, I have, a, I have a general curiosity about Halo Infinite. I fell out of Halo a long time ago. Uh, but I do have like this this curiosity about the development of this game, how it got delayed, all the fan reaction and hating the visuals, and <laughs> I, I just kind of have a curiosity about it. I don't know. Like I, I own Game Pass, so like I'm gonna check it out because I don't have to buy it. Yeah, that's the beauty of Xbox with Game Pass. You don't have to buy it, so I'm gonna yeah. check it out just because I can. But um, I just have a general curiosity about that game. Uh, outside of that, they, it, it's just a lot of, uh, you know, there's a new Age of Empires game in the works. Oh, nice. Um, don't know when we're going to see that. We're supposed to see it at some point this year. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. It's a PC game. Uh, they're remastering Total War Rome 2. Ooh. 
So, I mean, <laughs> Eric knows that that game. Oh, yeah. Is, oh, yeah. I can, like, literally lose my life to that one. Yeah. Oh, um, no. Oh, yeah. There's, uh, <laughs> I still play World of Warcraft to this day, so I have the latest expansion pack. So there's oh, always my. Okay. For that. That's definitely a life sinker. I, I'm embarrassed. I don't even want to say my slash played on that because it's mm. embarrassing how many years of my life I have wasted on World of Warcraft. <laughs> And most of it was, like, the early days, yeah. back when they had 40-man yeah. raids. Yeah. But, like, I've been playing it since 2004, I, I, guys. That's when that game came out. I haven't played it, and I've probably spent years watching you play it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. And we, remember when uh, we, I used to run raids, so, like, oh, yeah. you'd help me come up with strategies. Yeah. You don't even play the game, yeah. and you're helping me come up with strategies on how yeah. to take down the bosses yeah, for the for whole sure. raid. Like, I don't know if I ever told anyone I was raiding with that I had someone who doesn't play the game helping me strategize to take oh, yeah. out bosses. Yeah. <laughs> funny <laughs> um, sometimes it helps an outside perspective helps sometimes yeah. you're disconnected from it you know yeah get rid of your bias over certain people you're playing with and um outside of that uh honestly i think we're kind of in an interesting uh limbo right now where we, we I, have the next gen systems out um you know like i think the, the new hellblade game that's coming looks interesting but we haven't seen it and since the end of 2019 so i the, there's like a lot of games that look interesting but i, I need to finally see when they're coming um, cause yeah. I hope, like Metroid Prime four, I'm excited, yeah. but I yeah. don't know what it is. Cause you haven't seen right. it. Right. Yeah. Everyone's like, where, where is that? Like where, can Band we get out of three. That? I'm like super excited for Band out of three, but like, when are we going to see it? Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> yeah. N N N Nintendo really. Out yeah, of every like, company. Okay. Skyward like, Sword like, HD. Is, right okay. Cool. We know when is, that's coming. Yeah. Nintendo's like it's, weird. We don't, yeah. we don't actually, like if people sit down and think about it, new Pokemon snap, Mario golf, Skyward Sword HD, Breath of the Wild 2. What the hell else is Nintendo making? Uh, there's a lot of oh, speculation out there, but Metroid and Metroid. everything. Metroid, I mean, yeah, Met like, Metroid, yeah. Sorry, Metroid Prime 2, but, or 4, but it's like, but it's yeah. like we haven't had anything really new. And like when you think about like coming, like new Pokemon Snap. Okay, that's Game Freak. Yep. Okay, uh, Pokemon Arceus. That's Game Freak. Uh, there's a different uh, the the Pokemon Gen 4 remakes is an outside company doing that. Um, so that's all that takes care of all the Pokemon. Pokemon usually isn't Nintendo internally, anyways. Mm -hmm. Uh, and exactly, then, yeah, and then you have like Breath of the Wild 2, we know about Metro Prime 4 is by Retro Studios. Um, Mario Golf is technically made by an outside studio, so it's like, and, and Hyrule what are Warriors the internal deal. studios doing? Splatoon yeah. 3, that's what they're yeah. Splatoon 3, we know about that. Oh, right, Splatoon 3, yeah, <laughs> and that's I'm like not it. a Splatoon. Like what's so. what's the Mario team been doing? Hey, is there a Zelda game that we don't know about? I mean, I know there's a ton of speculation on like with the, the anniversary and stuff that you know there could be a collection of games. But what if it's a completely different game, even outside of Breath of the Wild two? I, I mean, a new so top down Zelda game. Yeah, that, I mean, yeah. There, I was just thinking that right. That'd be so amazing because 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 the last one was Link's Awakening, right? Yep, Redone. Yeah, yeah. And then before that was a link between worlds. Was the was was it top down? Kind of top down was the was the last. Technically, I'm going to correct you. It was Triforce Heroes. Uh, okay. Okay. Fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't People might not that. like that okay. one, but yeah. technically, yeah. it was that. Yeah. Okay, Triforce Heroes and a Link Between Worlds were the two that were like not remakes, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Awake yep. Was a remake, so they don't put. Obviously, there's a lot of effort that goes in, but not nearly as much because the story is already there. So it would be really, really, really cool if they had like another top down. Yeah, that was like no, for sure. New. I mean, that'd be a complete blindside to everybody because I know there's a lot of speculation of like them just packaging together games and stuff like that. But what if they actually completely blindside us by? Oh, oh love that. here's and a Nintendo brand new does game. That. They, do that. they do that. So because we all expect them. I think we're all kind of expecting them to follow the Mario footprint, the, the Mario path and how they did the celebration of the anniversary. I kind of hope they don't. I don't need the 35th anniversary ending and Nintendo takes games away. Well, right. But you know what, <laughs> so but you know what I'm saying? He doesn't really want them to go that route, but I know but, what you mean. I know what the, you mean. Not, not, not necessarily the game ending, but the, the, the path of, okay, we get this remade, this remade. We get a collection of this. And right. a mobile game, you know, something, you know, like that, that formula, not necessarily the game's ending, but that, that, that same kind of formula. I think everybody's kind of expecting and kind of follow that. Also, when are we ever getting Mario Kart nine? 
Oh. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is great, but like technically, I'm mean, how old is Mario Kart 8 now? Like when did that come out? That was a long time ago. Oh yeah, totally. Like, Very long. Uh, yeah, we just got Mario Kart uh, Home uh, Live Everything. Home Circuit or whatever, and that's fine. But like, it's not really a full Mario Kart game. It's more like an experimental. Right. So it came out in 2014. Oh. So, oh like, my god. Yeah. Wow. I mean, we're seven <laughs> years out from new Mario Kart. Uh, now I get it. Oh, Eight Deluxe. It was Wii U. They poured it. Fine, but right, right, right. Like we're kind of right, over like an actual full on own, own game. Quite. Dang, that's ooh. Do they? Give I mean, it? they're working on. They're doing Smash too. They're doing Smash stuff too, right? But characters they've only got like stuff, two three characters left. Yeah, they've only got a few left. Yeah, and it won't surprise. I mean, it won't surprise me if after the two, you know the few characters they fill this out, they'll. I know it's another round of characters. It wouldn't surprise me at all. Uh, I, I think they're done. I think Sakurai said there won't be another. But I, you know, I, yeah. I would love them to stop. Yeah. I, I, I here's what I think's happening with Smash. Like just to briefly touch on it. <laughs> yeah. Because Smash is a whole guy. We could talk about that forever. Right. Um, yeah. So Smash Ultimate, I think, is a really hard game to follow up because it's got the biggest roster with the most content, the most stages, right. the best and fighting game of all time, not even close. You know if you try to cut anything. I, I think like whenever Nintendo's next-gen system is going to come, they're just going to re-release Smash Bros. Ultimate and include all the DLC, kind of like they did with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Yep. Uh, but then, instead, in lieu of creating a new Smash game, um, I think for that generation, they're just going to say, here is a $40 10-character pack we're working on for that game. Mm-hmm. And that's when they'll bring back adding new characters and content. Because I, I honestly have no idea how they move on from Ultimate to make a new Smash game from the ground yeah, up. I, I literally... Yeah. I don't even know if yeah. it's possible. Anything they make is going to be a disappointment in comparison. Especially if they cut anything out. Because, they, cause, yeah, they cut rosters down. Like Sakurai said, this is the only Smash game that's going to have all the characters... Period. Well, okay. So any sequel after this is going to have a smaller roster, and people are going to be mad. Oh yeah. You so already I, saw that with Pokemon. That's why I like. I think they're just going to milk Ultimate for as long as they can. Right. It'd be interesting to see if they go the Ultimate route with Mario Kart. What do you mean? Instead of Mario Kart Nine, they go Mario Kart Mario Kart Ultimate, and they bring back. Well, people like, people have been wanting them to do Nintendo Kart for a while. Well, too. yeah. Just stop calling it Mario Kart. Combine all the franchises, and you're already bringing Animal Crossing in. You brought Zelda in. Like, yeah. what's stopping you from just making it? And I'm like, you know what's stopping them? The Mario Kart brand is too big. Oh yeah, they've they've proven they can add these franchises in and not call it. But anything that's but Mario Kart. I, I think that's also a way to bring the ultimate kind of the ultimate name into it too, because then you could start adding. Sure. I think. Once you kind of add that ultimate in there, you can kind of argue. You can start adding a little bit more. You get a little bit more leeway and adding more characters, different uh, see, franchises. I, I wonder, like, if they did a Mario Kart Ultimate, I, would they run into the same problem with Smash now? Where, like, you can't really follow up Ultimate with anything. Oh, right. But... That would be in a disappointment. So, like, if they do a Mario Kart Ultimate, say it has every track that's ever been in Mario Kart. Every character, plus new characters, plus oh new tracks. God. Like... How do you follow <laughs> that Mario Kart up I don't, with something that's lesser? I don't think you, you don't. You, don't. I, you, just, <laughs> exactly. you just keep building that's like on the it. the end of Mario. Like, right. I kind of feel like Smash Ultimate is the end. The end, of Smash? The end at least it's the end for Sakurai. Yeah. I don't think Sakurai is going to win any more Smash games. So, like, right. that, and I think that's the whole point. The reason Sakurai put so much time and effort in this because he's like, this is my swan song for the franchise. That's yeah, why he's it's like, this ultimate. is my legacy. Yeah. yeah. It's like a legacy mm-hmm. game for him. Um, yeah. he's going to move on and do other things, which is great. Maybe he'll get back involved with the Kirby franchise. Maybe he'll do something completely new and unique. Who knows? Um, you know, Kid Icarus Uprising, that was him. I don't know. You know, he's don't know. He, he, he recently said, no, nah, ain't coming back. We're not, I'm not bringing Kid Icarus Uprising back. I don't know. Maybe, no. he, maybe he didn't like the game. I don't know, but he said he's not bringing Aww. it back, but it doesn't mean there can't be other things he could work on. Um, mm-hmm. so I just think there's a, a, a lot of d- different directions they could go, um, with that, but, that being said, uh, I think we're going to get things kind of wrapped up up in here. Um, just looking at the time here, I think uh, they were saying good. Plus, I did ha- end up having a couple camera glitches there. Yeah. Dang oh, camera. No. So, any of you guys yeah. watching the video version where you saw it cut out and just show a bunch of game trailers, you'll know why the camera cut out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which is weird because the camera didn't cut out for like an hour. Right. And then it just, 
every 10 minutes let's cut out i don't understand yeah. it but oh, man. Oh, i thought i had it fixed i'll have to keep looking at it well the good news is guys uh panasonic is working directly with me behind the scenes to fix these camera issues because they agree the camera shouldn't have these kind of issues because their older oh, wow. version of this camera didn't have these issues uh so they do agree that this their camera shouldn't cut out like it is so um Anyways, it's okay. We'll get it all taken care of. Um, that was a, a, a nice little podcast, guys. Um, yeah. If you guys want to check out uh, Nintendo Prime Podcast audio-wise, we're literally everywhere that podcasts exist. Just look up Nintendo Prime Podcast. Uh, if you're if you're listening to the audio version, you want the video version, check out YouTube. Just look up YouTube channel Nintendo Prime. You'll find it. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Nindy Prime. Now, uh, Holly Wolf, where can they find you? Or do you want to send the fans to? Where I am well. Everywhere. If you want to follow my, I'm everywhere. Yes. Um, <laughs> Still on TikTok part, after that whole thing. Oh my goodness, silly TikTok. <laughs> I know, we won't get uh, into that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh social media. Yeah. Uh, it's a grand time. I'm constantly battling with them, but mm-hmm. you can find me mostly everywhere. Um, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, TikTok is all Holly T Wolf. And then uh, Instagram is Holly Wolf IRL. So uh, yeah, I stream on Twitch a few times a week. I oh, I'm on YouTube as well, uh, which is Holly T Wolf as well, which is my gaming channel. And uh, yeah, I'm literally just kind of all over the place. So. Yeah, do you have like a massive Facebook page that like, you barely post to? Well, Facebook, <laughs> I'm in the middle of completely overhauling uh, it, so I've been spending. Okay. One a month, and literally, then nothing. I, yeah. <laughs> I've deleted like three years of content on mm. Facebook because I'm working on getting it monetized. Um, uh, oh, okay, and okay. Yep. Facebook yep. is actually more sensitive uh, about female body parts than any other social media, so that's really been interesting. So even even a little bit too much cleavage, um, I've had to take it all down. Oh, but I got my channel fully monetized, uh, which is crazy. That's good. So, yeah. yeah, it's just a few more things I have to work on. But, uh, yeah, I have a Facebook page that only has 3.5 million. Yeah, I was going to be like, it's yeah. huge. I've been there. <laughs> yeah, that's my, that's, my, that's my original big social media that I kind of blew I was up like, on. I was like, Facebook. you know, I've been at all your social media. I think that's technically the biggest one in terms of the sheer number of people following. Yeah, I had a big Instagram and I got rid of it. Um <laughs> Because it was deleted at one point, and I made a backup, and then Instagram verified my backup, and I was like, oh, okay. okay. All right. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, I guess I'm working on this one now, and I just, I just, it was too much, so I, I sold yeah. my, my old Instagram, which was my bigger one. I was like, I'm just going to put this money towards cosplays, so I made there a good go. little chunk of selling my profile, and it's now like a model promo page, and Cool. I'm funding like four cosplays, so nice. Yeah, there you go. I'm down. I'm yeah. down, and it's one less thing to worry about. Oh, so yeah. That's there you go. <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm trying to like consolidate here. Yeah. So I'll, I'll have links to all of her socials, guys, if you want to follow yes. her down in the description. Mm-hmm. Um, and you guys know how it goes. All of our guests, we do lots of promotions, uh, promoting their content and their stuff throughout the week that the mm-hmm. podcast is out. So uh, you guys will be able on our Twitter, on our on our Facebook page, everywhere else. You'll see us tossing on stuff. Don't be surprised if you see her Zelda cosplay pop up a few times because it's my one of my favorite things I've ever done. Several new Zelda cosplays coming nice. this year. Yes, nice. many, many of them. Um, one this spring, hopefully, it should be actually fil- uh, shot in like two weeks. Yes. Uh, but yeah, I'm trying my hardest to get through new Nintendo things. Yeah, so just, and Zelda just wait, is just wait until them. Breath of the Wild two comes out, and then there's a whole new. Oh wow. Well, there are so many gorgeous <laughs> female characters that I have been wanting to cosplay mm-hmm. from Zelda for mm-hmm. years. So I hope, <laughs> I hope Breath of the Wild doesn't introduce too many new ones because <laughs> yeah, I that's are. What's happen. That's what's gonna happen. That's, like, right. I'm doing this character, awesome. this character, and then Breath of the Wild two comes, and like, ah, damn it. <laughs> that's a huge problem with cosplay. Is is my list is ever growing? Right. Mm-hmm. And new things come out all the time and you add it to the list or or you're working on something and you kind of throw it to the side because something <laughs> new comes out. It's really it, it's a it's a hectic mess, but it always works out in the end. But uh, yeah, I, I want to do so many, so many cosplays <laughs> from Zelda. Yeah. If I had my way, I would just do that. <laughs> <laughs> and like forego any of the sexy stuff, but that's the stuff that makes me the money yeah. that I yeah. can then 
best. You got to like, go where the money's at to do what you want to do. That's, right. that's kind well, of yeah, I use yeah. the that, and the, that's one last point I'll make quickly is a lot of people don't realize that we do a lot of the sexier stuff because it will make us the money mm-hmm. to then fund these things that we want done. Mm-hmm. Like I did, uh, I did Zelda, like the, like her queen version from breath of the wild, mm-hmm. that beautiful dress. Mm-hmm. And, and that was like, like $2,000, like all of it put together. So I, I'm just not, not throwing around like two grand here and there willy nilly. Like mm-hmm. I, it needs to come from somewhere. So right. I, I use sexy stuff to make, my things that I love, and it happens a lot, right? Well, if it's yeah, up to me, I just like people that wonder, all the time. <laughs> you know, like I think when I get complimented on how the podcast looks now and everything, it's like, well, the camera, the microphones, the foam, the the table, the t- stuff that pay for itself. I make other videos that maybe you guys don't like so much mm-hmm. because they perform better and make money, so I could do stuff like the podcast, which I just said seventy two cents an episode. Like, yeah, I get good viewership. <laughs> But unfortunately, just the way it works, I you don't really make much money off of it. So I when you see me put up a rumor video or a this or that, guess what? Those are the videos that get, you know, thousands and thousands of views that make the money so I can do the content I want to do. Exactly. So it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, you got to take yeah. the good with the bad sometimes. Um, and I have fun with some of the stuff, but it's still this podcast. If I had it my way, this channel would be nothing but a podcast. I would literally just do podcasts all the time. (laughs) That's that's my ultimate end goal. I want my channel to be a conversation podcast channel, but right, yeah, there's just no money there. Yeah, do the other stuff, but it's not like you hate the other stuff. You know, you still enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, I still enjoy it, but like not as much as this. This conversation right right now is like the highlight of what I've done for my channel all week. And that's just Mm -hmm. the way it is every single week with the podcast. Mm -hmm. Well, when we have a podcast, we didn't have one last week. (laughs) (laughs) Right, but. All right. Well, thanks for thanks for coming on, Holly. It was awesome. Hopefully, yeah, thank get you, you out uh, some future episodes because uh, sure. I try to rotate the guests in and out. So you know, probably in a month or so, I'll hit you and be like, "Hey, what are you doing? Are you, uh, are you, are you free? Hopefully, you don't don't have another tooth surgery that same week." <laughs> yeah, that was not fun. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Uh, Eric, is there uh, anywhere that you want people to follow you? I mean, same I got, old, same old. Got, emo eighty seven ninety. Yeah, Twitter, Twitter emo eighty seven ninety. Yeah. I mean, Ooh. technically I don't tweet. you're on TikTok a lot, but I don't know if you have an I, account. I, no. No, I don't. <laughs> I just know he's on TikTok. I just watch he's it. sending me funny videos. I just watch it because it's funny. <laughs> TikTok's I don't, great. I did yeah. it for just scrolling. Oh, my goodness. I yeah, waste you, so you much You could waste hours. <laughs> yeah. TikTok is, is yeah. addictive and just, like, no matter how many dumb videos you see, there'll be, like, one every, like, six videos where you're like, okay, that's kind of good. Yeah. And so you yep. keep scrolling to find yep. the next good one. Yep. Yep. <laughs> But <laughs> all right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, hey, we'll uh, catch you in the, the next episode, which is hopefully next week. We'll yeah, see. right. I don't technically have a guest <laughs> scheduled yet, but yeah, we'll figure it out. Fly by the seat of the pants sometimes here at Nintendo Prime. Yeah. <laughs> all right.